Mac Voices is sponsored by Mint Mobile. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash macvoices. This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Linode, your solution when you need a virtual server in the cloud. Use the code MACVOICES to take $20 off your first purchase at linode.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, I have the rare privilege, I don't get to do it nearly as often as I would like to, of talking to Mr. Ken Ray. I listen to Ken a lot because of all his shows, but I don't get to hear from him and, and engage with him. So now, Mr. Ken Ray. Ken, good to have you. Hey, Chuck. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Well, I, I really appreciate it. And, you know, I, I should call you more and just say, hey, come on the show and let's just talk. Yeah. But I, I don't. I'm always I, here, man. <laughs> Well, I, I know, but but <laughs> I know I know you're busy, and I hate to take your time, mm. but I, I always so I try to find a topic or or a subject. And this time, um, we are going to we want to just touch on the fact that you have a brand new show. I do. Well, kind of. Yes, it's been going. This is its eighth week now, but it's just it finally went public this week. So yeah, I have a show called um, uh, In a Few Minutes. Sorry. I was trying to figure out what I was going to say. Um, I have a show called In a Few Minutes, which is um, a, a daily conversation just about sort of general Apple stuff, but not happening daily. We can talk about production if you want to or whatever. But basically, it's it, it's I spend um, all day writing about Apple news, and then I present Apple news, and then I go away and you know do it again for the next day and the day after that. And uh, I used to have a show called um, iChart Radio, where it was me and one guy getting together once a week and talking over Apple stuff. And I thought, wouldn't it be a fun thing to have that conversation happen more often, but in shorter bursts? And so that's sort of, uh, that's sort of the, the germination, if you will, with, uh, with sort of a weird sound to it too, I think. <laughs> well, yeah, there, I mean, there are a lot of questions I would like to ask about this, but you, you alluded to the fact that you're eight weeks in, even though it has just gone public. Mm -hmm. And you took the, uh, as far as I know, unusual approach, because I haven't seen it done before, of sort of testing this out and doing a dry run behind the, the Patreon wall. So I needed to be a patron of Mac OS Ken or of the new show, depending on how you look at it, to get mm -hmm. access to it. And I, yeah, I mean, why? I, is, was it just a, was it a way to to limit it to your most loyal audience and and have them get used to it, or what was your thinking? Well, there were a few things. Um, first of all, so I've had a Patreon uh, going for Mac OS Ken. I want to say since twenty sixteen, and there are various various things that are offered there. And then late last year, when I decided, or it was decided, <laughs> when we all got together and decided we weren't all going to be together anymore on Mission Log, um, I wasn't really nervous about loss of revenue, but I was curious about, you know, how I was going to make that revenue up. And so the first thing I did was I said, hey, I'm going to introduce a new tier in Patreon. It's going to be a buck. I don't know what I'm going to make. I don't know when I'm going to make it, but... I do know that when I start producing a new audio thing, I'm going to want people to listen to it, you know, so I can get some feedback and find out, you know, what people are like, what people aren't liking, things like that. The other thing is every new show that I produce, I produce for a while before I actually do it. When we did Mission Log, I think we produced four or five before we even said that we were going to be releasing it. Uh, when I did iChart Radio, I believe we did four, um, four weeks running before we said we were going to do it with uh, in a few minutes it was a combination of finding the sound making sure i was going to you know have uh, topics to talk about finding people with whom i was going to be comfortable and that, i don't think that list is done yet um i have found now seven people that i can go back to repeatedly that i know about but one or two people i'm actually not sure that it's going to continue to work uh, a couple of other people that i was thinking about calling um, people we may know uh, that i was thinking about calling that just didn't happen in the first round so i'm not sure it's not complete <laughs> but it got it got enough of its own sound it got enough of its own rhythm and uh, it got good enough response from the patreon people that i thought okay well this will be a thing and we'll do that and then that is still a tier that's going to be open because now anybody who joined for the buck 
And they're like, well, now you're just giving away for free. Okay, you can go ahead and cancel if you, oh, sorry, you can go ahead and cancel if you want to. Um, I mean, I would appreciate it if you didn't. But the other thing is, once it's going for a few weeks, once it's actually, you know, picked up whatever steam it's going to pick up in public, there is another show idea that I'm considering working on or, or actually planning on working on, and that'll end up in the test kitchen too. So it's basically just going to be, yeah, it's going to be a place where I can try stuff out and, you know, hopefully get some good feedback from people. And if I do something wildly wrong, hopefully those people will be like, mm, no, <laughs> <laughs> they are. It is a test kitchen is really what it is. It's try this out. See what you think. Let me know what you think. And then uh, either we send it out to the dining room or we, you know, throw it away and start over. Interesting metaphor. Interesting Thanks. metaphor. So, I mean, I think I have a Patreon campaign for Mac Voices. I know probably just about everybody runs a Patreon campaign of some kind. Mm -hmm. The idea, and and I want to explore that a little bit, but I want to go back to to iChart and to the beginning of submission log. Were those, I mean, those shows weren't behind a a Patreon wall or anything. Were they just produced and never saw the light of day? Um, Day six was a feed that I had where when I started producing iChart, so that sort of was behind the paywall. There was a group of people who were listening to things and I was, you know, um, putting stuff out regularly at the time for that. Um, So that was going out. Mission Log, uh, I can't remember, honestly, how we did it for Mission Log because that was seven years ago now. I mean, some of it was John was sharing it with some of his friends. Rod was sharing it with some of his friends. I think I might have put that out in the day six feet as well. I'm not sure, honestly. Um, I mean, you've been doing what you've been doing long enough. I've been doing what I've been doing long enough. I know if I like the sound of something that I'm doing. I mean, if I do it and something doesn't sound right, I mean, like in my head, I'll go ahead and try to figure out how to do it next. So I guess I could have done it just like, you know, producing the seven weeks and, you know, burning it and saying, yeah, that'll be fine. But I mean, that also changes how you know, it changes your performance, right? I mean, like I could I could sit here by myself and record a show, but if I know that ever, nobody's ever going to hear it, then I'm not really doing it necessarily the the level of justice that it deserves, and I won't necessarily be giving the level of performance that I should uh, that I should be giving it. So, yeah, I take it all very seriously, Chuck. I guess that's what I'm saying. I had a friend one time who was very excited about a show that they were launching. And they produce the show and they launch the show immediately. And I really wish they had talked to me first because what I would have said was, if you're doing a weekly show, uh, do it for a month. If you're doing a daily show, do it for a month or, you know, actually a, a weekly show, I probably would have said do it for two months because what happened was he did it for three weeks and then he flamed out. And then it became like a total, like an embarrassing thing where he actually, I don't think even talks to a lot of the people that he had been talking to because he was so embarrassed by that. And, and, and I think you would have told him, you know, do it for a bit before you actually go public. I certainly would have told him do it for a bit before you go public. I mean, there's no shame in, in trying it and having it not work. But if you're worried about the embarrassment, do it while nobody's looking. You know, that's always one of my first pieces of advice for anybody who asks to. No, it's a, it's a good piece, piece of advice. And, and where I was going with that, I was curious about that because honestly, I mean, I've, I was part of the day six feed. Um, I was, you know, I was aware of mission log earlier probably than some people. And I don't mm-hmm. remember those. Doesn't mean they weren't there. I just, you know, I don't remember that particular part of the evolution. Yeah. I, w- I would imagine that's something I did because it's, it's the kind of thing I do. It's the kind of thing I would think I would hope to, you know, do share it with people and get, you know, some kind of feedback. So it's not just happening in a vacuum. So let me be real clear here. I don't want any numbers. That's not what I'm asking. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you got enough feedback in the test kitchen to say, okay, this is a thing and it's it's working and we'll go from there. Was there a temptation to stay behind the paywall and produce it just for those folks and have Mac OS can be maybe a little more public facing and maybe throw an occasional uh, in a few minutes into that feed as a promo and just keep it behind the paywall? No, it didn't really. It didn't really occur to me to do that because that's what that's what that tier was set up for. I mean, it was set up specifically for that to try it out for people. I mean, to, to, with the idea of going public with it. There are, and I guess there are a few reasons to do that. First of all, 
trying to talk somebody into signing up for something that they've never heard or can only hear occasionally doesn't seem like necessarily the best way to go, maybe. I'm a believer in daily shows. I'm a believer in ad revenue for daily shows. I was very clear with uh, with uh, the people in the test kitchen. Ideally, what that's going to be at some point is an ad-driven show, same as Mac OS Ken is currently. Um and, and to be completely honest, I'm I'm trying out I'm trying out a I'm trying out a business model here. Not just not just for my own stuff, but if I can produce this show the way that I'm producing it for me for other people, and then introduce advertising into that as well. I mean, I don't I don't know what I'm doing, Chuck. That's, there's the <laughs> real answer. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying things that seem like they would work for me based on, you know, how I personally think about consumption of media and also based on what has worked for Mac OS Ken. Um, so, so that's, that's kind of that. No, it didn't occur to me to keep it behind the paywall. Um, in the same way, I'm not Tom Merritt, but in the same way that Tom Merritt does some stuff that, you know, stays behind the paywall and then other stuff, I mean, he uses what happens on Patreon uh, to support a ton of stuff that's forward facing. And you can watch his stuff all day long and never contribute to his Patreon um, because, you know, enough people do that he's able, you know, he's able to keep uh, throwing that stuff out there. I, at the same time, there are things that do happen specifically for the Patreon people. Um, at the $20 level, I mail people stuff that's been sort of hit or miss lately. It was happening like clockwork month to month. Now it tends to sort of be like big things come every couple of months. Um, although there's something coming very soon. I'm really excited about it. But anyway, at the $10 level, there's a, a, a daily script, which is basically sort of like a daily newsletter. That I've honestly thought about taking public more because getting people to sign up for a newsletter is kind of an interesting thing, but then you have to worry about ad sales for it and stuff. So as far as the audio stuff, it's no, it did not occur to me to keep that uh, behind the paywall because yeah, as a podcaster, I want as many people as possible to to hear what I'm producing. Mint Mobile is sponsoring this edition of Mac Voices, and that makes me happy. Why? Because Mint Mobile is different than those other big wireless providers that all do the same thing the same way and expect you to keep footing the bill. Mint Mobile is a new kind of carrier, doing business online without the need for big, expensive retail stores and passing the savings on to you. My Mint Mobile experience started about a week before I was doing some traveling. I popped my old SIM out of my iPhone, put the new SIM in, and went through the very easy activation process and was up and running in no time. Then I took my new phone from central Pennsylvania to Chicago, then to Boston, then on to Las Vegas, and never missed a beat. My only reminder was seeing Mint at the top of my iPhone screen instead of the old carrier. You can have that same experience and cut your wireless bill down to 15 bucks a month, and that includes nationwide talk and text. Stop paying for unlimited data you never use. Mint Mobile has plans for 3, 8, or 12 gigabytes of LTE data. Isn't it time you reevaluated your cell carrier? Give Mint Mobile a look, cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month, and get the plan shipped to your door for free by visiting mintmobile.com slash macvoices. That's mintmobile.com slash macvoices. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash macvoices. Thanks to Mint Mobile for their support of Mac Voices. I, I agree with this, and, and I don't. I want to make sure we don't turn this into just a, a podcast episode. But yeah. I think that you know, it's sort of like talking to developers about subscription models versus you know one-time sales. Mm -hmm. you know, at the end, at the end of the day, you, you got to have franks and beans, you know, somehow. And whether that's through sponsors, whether it's through patrons, and mm -hmm. and as you said, trying out different business models. Um, I know I've, I've struggled with that myself and you're right as a podcaster, you want to put it out there and, and, you know, make sure as many people hear it as possible. And frankly, it's, it's always been a challenge for me that just like this, if I ask you to come on this show mm -hmm. and I want to, I want to put it out in public for, for the audience, for you, you know, because I don't think it's really very cool for me to take up your time and then put it behind a wall that says, okay, you have to, you have to pay a buck or two or three or five or whatever to listen to it. You know, that, that also makes it difficult for you to share your yeah. appearance, you know, for your audience. So it is this weird thing that we're, we're all trying to accomplish. And I don't think any of us are getting rich, you know, but you at least need to cover the, the, the bills. Yeah. And so, you know, I mean, I th the other thing too, I think, I mean, different people find different models that work for them. I mean, one of the things that uh, not to keep, uh, 
not to keep holding him up, but uh, one of the things that Tom Merritt does, I mean, he he is able to lay in hard to his Patreon thing because he very clearly does not accept advertising dollars, right? Um, I'm I am incredibly blessed, humbled, all those terms that people use, and you think they don't mean them, but as I start to say them, I get I get choked up. The people turn up for my Patreon is. I don't want to say it's insane to me because it's not. Um, it's incredibly touching though. And I can't think about it too much because uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, I don't want to say it's like a weight, but it's so incredibly humbling. I am, I'm truly, well, we got something going on, me and my Patreon people. And I, <laughs> and I don't, I don't think I'm fully aware of what it is. I'm incredibly grateful for it. Um, but man, that's, I mean, it's, it is really something to say to people, Hey, listen, I, I could use a little scratch for what I'm doing and for people that you don't know to be like, all right, you know, I mean, I, I know that they're getting something out of what I do, which I'm, which I'm really glad about. I also know that in a lot of ways, and you know, this too, you put your show out, your show goes out and you're like, well, I hope somebody's getting something out of it. If you can turn to your Patreon or I can turn to my Patreon and see, okay, well, okay. Somebody's getting something out of it. I mean, it's almost like a, it's like a, I don't want to say validation, but it's kind of a validation, right? I mean, like, okay, that this is not just, you know, give me five minutes of your time. I mean, somebody's giving me five bucks. I don't know if they've got, I don't know how comfortable that is for them. Maybe five bucks is an easy thing to throw away. Maybe it's an incredibly difficult thing, but they're parting with currency for you, <laughs> which is like, which feels yeah, weird. Well, but, but you're delivering, I mean, somewhere between, you're probably a little more, well, yeah, I guess we're both a little more information driven. I mean, I mm -hmm. think there's an, enter there's an entertainment value to, to what we do, but I think it is information driven. And it's, you're right, it's gratifying to get uh, an acknowledgement of, of any kind yeah. that, that people are listening, watching, getting value from what, what you do. Because there, God knows there are plenty of sources out there that they can go and, uh, and, and try to get things. So Right. And if you can put that acknowledgement towards rent, bonus, you know, <laughs> or groceries or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Good point. Good point. So, so let's, let's just boil this down real quick because I want to make sure. So the, right now the Patreon that you run covers basically they're not, they're not two separate ones. It's, it's for Ken Ray, producer of Mac OS Ken, and now producer of um, a few minutes. I guess so. In a few minutes. Sorry. In a few I, minutes. I know Sorry. it's ridiculous, but no, it's okay. Yeah. Um, I guess so. I honestly hadn't thought about it in those terms. I mean, the reason I originally set up the Patreon uh, was because at one point, and you can do the math because I just said 2016, at one point ad sales had dried the heck up and um, it, it was a little touch and go on how, on how I was going to make bills for a short period of time. Uh, luckily, I've got enough diverse revenue streams right now that I think if one thing fell apart, it's cool because I've got two or three other things going. Um, but it sort of came down to that. So yeah, I guess it's uh, the Patreon for Mac OS Ken is really the Patreon. My Twitter handle is Mac OS Ken. So I guess it's the Patreon for, for me and for the stuff that I produce. I guess that would be the best way to best way to say it. Okay, so at the one, I mean, kick out the levels for me and the benefits because I oh. want to make sure we, we, we are clear on this for everybody. We don't, we, we can just talk about the new show. That's fine. Well, we're going to, we're going All to, right. but, but, you know, I mean, since we're into this, you know, I want to make sure that people right. understand that, look, if they're fans of the new show, they need yeah. to know this. If they're fans of the old show, they need to know this because yeah. they may be missing something. Okay. So at $1, it's, it's access to the test kitchen. And that's that's pretty much whatever the next audio thing that I produce, because right now the test kitchen is closed. Everything's out, right? So in a few minutes is out right now. Mac OS Ken is still out. There is another show that I'm planning on doing. It's probably going to be at least a month to a month and a half before that starts. But when that starts, it's going to go in there. Uh, $5, you're supposed to get your name on my website. I think I did that last month. I'm really bad at all this stuff, though. It's another reason I want to talk about it so much. The one thing that is incredibly consistent is um, at the $10 level, you get the Daily Blast, which is my script, but, you know, as a PDF that I send out to everybody. 
uh, which has links. Uh, it's also got, you know, the incredible writing and typos that come with every day. Um, but I mean, honestly, one of the biggest things is links to all the stuff that I'm talking about. So when I did the thing back in September on the Uyghurs, um, and, 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 and the Chinese uh, government sort of moving in on them in a harsh way, I learned so much uh, doing that episode and I couldn't cover half of what I learned. I couldn't co cover a quarter of what I learned. So if there's something like that, where it's like, okay, that feels like some information that I want more about. If you're at the ten dollar level, you've got every link that I used, and then you know links to other stuff as well. Um, and since I'm making my script every day, that is the most consistent thing that happens. It goes out usually at the exact same time that Mac OS Ken goes out. And then the twenty dollar level is uh, is I will mail you something. <laughs> sometimes it's something that's handmade. Sometimes it's something that I found that I thought was cool and bought a few of. Sometimes it's something that I had made someplace else, like you know. I don't think I've ever done buttons or stickers, but uh, stickers are on the way. I'm really excited about those. I've never ordered stickers with my face on them, Chuck. Oh, okay. Yeah, who has? I know yeah. what you're thinking, but yeah, yeah, there you go. So anyway, so so yeah, that's that's the Patreon thing. Oh, this makes me so... Thank you for asking me. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about it in a few minutes. Okay. Um, so, but we'll get there through this channel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are you? Are you, do you consider yourself a tech journalist? Do you consider yourself a content producer? Do you consider yourself a podcaster um, or a, a, a mix of all those or something else? Yeah. I mean, all those. Well, I, the one thing I would have a hardest time uh, calling myself as a tech journalist because I didn't go to journalism school. I learned to write news from a guy who wrote news for a station in Boston, Massachusetts, and he was good. Um, he actually got offered a gig in New York at one point, and they told him, you know, they'll pay for his uh, apartment, they'll pay for his car to bring him back and forth, you know, all these things, and he just didn't want to leave Boston. A guy named Len Malo, who sadly passed away a few years ago. I also got to, uh, I also got to intern at WFNX in Boston. Then there was a guy named Henry Santoro who now does news for um, the NPR station in Boston on the morning edition. Um, so I learned to write news from those guys. I got to kind of hone it at a couple of different things I did, working at Tech TV Radio, working at um, a Business Radio 1220 in San Francisco. So I learned to write. But I'm not, I, I, I can't do the shoe leather thing. I can't go out and, you know, find out. I don't have a ton of sources that I can call. I'm writing for broadcast. So 10 years ago, you asked me that question. I would say I'm a radio guy, but I haven't done actual, you know, according to Hoyle Radio. Phew, golly, I don't even know, 12 years, 13 years now. Definitely a content producer. And what was the other one you asked? A podcaster? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would say definitely that, although I do remember the first time I introduced ads to Mac OS Ken, somebody told me that I was killing the spirit of podcasting, which I thought was kind of funny, because I thought the spirit of podcasting was kind of like, you know, whatever. Uh, that said, I'm kind of annoyed that, you know, 30-year-old Oprah Winfrey shows are now called podcasts. And I saw that Johnny Carson has a podcast as well. I don't know if you saw this. Have you seen this? No, I missed that. No, I missed that. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny Carson has a podcast where they're just, you know, playing old Johnny Carson stuff. So I guess everything's a podcast at this point. I don't think I would consider Carson a podcaster. Yes, I would consider myself a podcaster. But, you know. <laughs> okay. So, so since you've answered that that way, mm -hmm. what is in a few minutes, where does it fit into those? Is it, is it entertainment? Is it information? Um, how do you see it? Or, and I know that you're, you're, I guess, what, nine? You're in your nine, ninth week? Nine, so. uh, yeah, eighth week, actually. The eighth, eighth week, week is on right now. Yeah. Uh, okay. um, so what, what is it? Now that you've had a chance to, I'll take your metaphor, you, you had a chance to cook it a little bit, bake it, you know, throw a little sauce on it. Mm -hmm. what, what is it? It's a conversation about stuff that I find interesting with people I find interesting. I mean, from a technology side, mostly from an Apple side, though not necessarily completely. It's kind of easy to sort of uh, move out of that a bit because as Apple gets into more and more things, you find yourself talking about more and more stuff, right? Like, I don't know if Apple's actually going to get into self-driving cars, but 
I could see an episode of it being about that. I could see, um, you know, I talked with uh, Mike Rose a few weeks ago about 5G, which so far is not an Apple thing. Apple doesn't have a 5G phone, but everybody knows that Apple is going that way or everybody thinks they know that Apple's going that way. So we talked about that. I don't, it's, and this might get back into the business model idea as well. And I hate to make it sound like all businessy business, but it's, it's just part of a continuing daily conversation, I think. Um, for people who haven't heard it, it begins with the end of Mac OS Ken. And then the idea is you, you, know, you flip a radio dial and there's some weird random thing of audio and you as the listener decide, no, I'm not going to listen to that. So then there's a little bit more static. And then you come in on the middle of a conversation that I'm having with someone else. It's, at least that's the conceit. That's what it's designed to sound like. Um, one time, Shelly and I were supposed to talk about something. It's kind of funny. We had a topic we were going to talk about, and then the conversation went a different direction. And then I was like, okay, we had a topic, but let's just bag it because I want to tell you this story, and then I want you to tell me this story. And so we did this thing and then uh, came into the next episode and said, yeah, so we had a topic we were going to talk about yesterday. We didn't, and we're not going to. And now you'll always wonder what it was. And here's the problem. I don't remember what it was anymore. Now I'm the guy sitting there going, what were we going to talk about? I don't know. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's like, it's like playtime. Um, it's short. That is like, that's one of the big things. It is a few minutes. It's 10, 15 minutes on a topic. Although in that topic, we might end up hitting two or three or bouncing around to two or three. Um, I want it to be short. I want it to be manageable. And, uh, Yes, I want it to be entertaining. Hopefully it is to people. Uh, hopefully it's entertaining and informative and all those things. The informative, I'm mostly relying on guests. Like I, like um, Wednesday's edition, today's Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday's edition uh, this week was I asked Peter Cohen about the ARM-based Mac, which I find an interesting idea, but I don't have many thoughts on it. Well, Peter had a ton of thoughts on it. If you look at the waveform, it's mostly Peter talking in that episode but he opened my head to a bunch of like really neat ideas about it and some really neat possibilities about it too uh same thing with uh, mike rose on the 5g episode i asked him a question and i thought we were just kind of like you know kind of riff a little bit and he he went he just went and that was fantastic that was a very a very informative episode for me uh which hopefully is very informative for other people as well if we goof off now and again, that's fine. I don't want it just to be a goofy show. This is not just a me and my buddies, you know, joking around kind of show. Um, but there should be humor in it. It's not a, you know, it's not 60 minutes. Well, because it's only 15 minutes, but I mean, it's not 60 minutes. It's not a, you know, here's everything you need to know about everything thing. It's, uh, it's people that I personally find interesting that I hope other people will find interesting as well. And then uh, kicking around a few topics. In, in one of the early episodes uh, in, in the test kitchen, you and Peter talked about, I think, your love of zines um, right. from, from the early days and that you were comparing this, this experiment to a zine. And yeah. I, that, that really, that made me think because, you know, yes, just like everybody else, you know, I, I had favorite zines and I liked the idea of this being a little less structured, a little looser, you know, but very much a passion project kind of thing. And that's, yeah. that's what's, that's what struck me about the, the format and the way you're doing it. Yeah. You know, it stinks though. You hit a format and all of a sudden you're not doing a zine anymore. <laughs> right. I mean, it's funny because I like that idea. I like that sound. And that's how I got the whole like thing at the beginning. Right. The, the weird audio thing and the, and the static and all that stuff, but it's already got a format. I still like it. I mean, maybe part of the zine thing too, is the fact that you can go sideways on a topic you can incorporate, you know, a little bit more of the ramble stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty nailed down as far as the topic goes. Now it's got a masthead. It's got, it's, it's, it, it quickly went from zine to, uh, to a produced publication, but with, uh, but with still with that zine feel, hopefully. Yeah. I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, you know, I, I mean, but this may not be the best comparison, but I'll do it anyway. It's the early days of Wired Magazine. Mm -hmm. which, which was just, you know, a complete revelation in the publishing industry for the typography and the colors and, you know, yeah. everything. And that kind of became its shtick. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
even to even up to today, it's still maybe a little less, but it, so it it was edgy then, but just the fact that it it became established, you know, it that char- those characteristics right maybe became less edgy just because they were doing the same thing over and over and over right you can't i mean that that's the thing i mean you you do strive for a sound you do try strive for a look or a feel or something like that like i can't just suddenly like next week i can't just like do five minutes of what is it uh, you know like the throat singing that they that the inuits do in the middle of a show <laughs> right you can't do that you can't just introduce like a oh the sounds of the wild in the middle of a show i mean it's, <laughs> it's got to be it's got to be what it is um yeah hopefully it, it retains some of that ethos some of that attitude though uh, yeah. i guess we'll find out ask me again in a year okay i'll put it on the calendar you're back here in a year <laughs> I'm so glad that you though descri- explained the um, the transition between Mac OS Ken and this show because ironically, I when when I subscribe to them in in Overcast, mm-hmm. um, I put them right beside each other. I put mm-hmm. Mac OS Ken first, and then and then uh, in a few minutes second, and ye- I hadn't even thought about the the old analog flipping of the radio dial. As mm-hmm. soon as you said it, it's like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense, because I. But there, there was this sense that okay, Mac OS Ken is over now. We're going into, you know, something related. Mm-hmm. But I never, never thought about the analog uh, radio thing. Well, okay, bummer then. <laughs> Maybe well, no. I didn't make it clear enough. I mean, no, it's, I mean, that's that's fine. It's what's funny is I was actually before I took it public, I thought about killing the end of the Mac OS Ken thing because. You and I have talked about how strange my uh, work schedule is before. I, I've got the, uh, the in a few minutes set to go off at a certain time every night because I produce them all as a bunch. And so I you know, post them all and then you know, schedule them to go out. And Mac OS Ken goes out five minutes after it's done. And unless I finish early enough, in which case I'll set it to go off at midnight. And so uh, there were times when it was in the test kitchen where people were like, yeah, so the one problem I'm having is I know the test kitchen is supposed to go after Mac OS Ken, but it hits my feed before Mac OS Ken. And so it's actually playing out of order for me. And I'm like, okay, well, that's, that's a little bit more structured than I meant for it today. So then I thought, oh, maybe I'll kill the end of the Mac OS Ken thing. But, you know, enough people liked it that I kept it. Although if I ever change the end of Mac OS Ken, then, oh, yeah, it's, it's too many questions, Chuck, too many questions. <laughs> well, so folks, if you subscribe to both, make sure, because I use Overcast, and in and, and there I can arrange my priority podcasts. And um, so just make sure Mac OS Ken is first, ah. and in a few minutes a second, and then it'll work. Or listen however you want. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to stay true to your vision, Ken. No, I understand. No, you see, that's the thing. It wasn't, that was not, see, it wasn't supposed to be listen to this first, then listen to this second. The implication was supposed to be um, that it's just part of the same thing. It's part of the same continuing conversation. I'll tell you what's been weird to me is how many times the stuff that we have talked about on in a few minutes has synced up within a day or two of what's happening in the news because I'm getting together with people on Friday or Saturday, hopefully not Sunday, but I'm getting together with people on Friday or Saturday to record all five episodes for the following week. And it's really weird to me when it just so happens that the show that comes out today matches something that's happening in the news. Cause there's no way I could have known that that was going to happen. Um, I've been very lucky on that a few times, not every time, obviously, but been very lucky on that a few times. I think um, Jean-Louis Gasset, I don't know if I'm saying his name right or not, mm. he wrote a big thing about ARM Max, I think yesterday, as we, as you and I sit here and record this. Peter and I recorded three days ago an ARM Mac thing that hit today. So I don't know, maybe it's because we're all, you know, looking at the same stuff and reading the same stuff. We're all sort of, you know, these things are sort of kicking around in our heads a tiny bit. And then we're like, yeah, I think, I think we could probably do something about that. And so then three things will happen that like all hit at about the same time with, as far as I know, nobody looking over anybody's shoulder. Linode.com slash Mac Voices is where you want to go if you need a virtual hosted cloud server. What makes Linode so great? That's what Linode specializes in. They feature native SSD storage, a 40 gigabit network, and industry-leading processors. So your server is F-A-S-T fast. Because you pay for only what you use with hourly billing across all plans and add-on services. 
No extra charges for data transfer, no hidden fees or nasty surprises at the end of the month. Because Lender has a new cloud manager with an improved user interface, so deploying your server or servers is easier than ever. Because Lender has data centers all over the world, from Toronto to Mumbai. So if location matters, Linode has it covered. Because they have a large documentation library to help you get started and help you make the most of your server. Because Linode has 24-7 live customer support, so if you get stuck or have issues, help is just a phone call away. Because Linode has a ton of add-ons, so that you can customize your server with exactly what you want and what you need. Backups, blocks, node balancers, load balancers, and more. So what do you need to do to take advantage? Visit linode.com slash macvoices to get $20 credit toward your first server. Again, linode.com slash macvoices gets you $20 off your first server. Check it out now and be up and running in minutes. Thanks to Linode for their support of Mac Voices. Did you pay any attention to the, I, I hope I'm pronouncing it, I think I'm pronouncing it right, the, the Quibi announce, announcement? No. Um, yes. Okay. So Quibi is this new startup um, that's headed by some heavy hitters that is going to be allegedly producing or delivering these very short form video bites mm-hmm. that you can consume, you know, while you're in line at the grocery store or whatever. And it, and, and now we have uh, in a few minutes, which is a, a, a short form kind mm-hmm. of thing. Do you think this is the way it's all going? Uh, is it, I, I mean, I, this is your vision, and this is kind of the way you've always done things, I think, mm-hmm. except for iChart, which was a little longer form. Um, but yours has always been a little bit, you know, you know, um, like like jab, a jab in, in, in a boxing match. Um, mm-hmm. not, not long and drawn out like Mac Voices sometimes can be. So is this where it's going? I mean, are we all, should we all be looking more at short-form content that can be just picked up in, real quick? No. I don't think so. I mean, I think I don't think any one place is any place that ev- anything is going. I think every place is some place that something could go. Not to sound, I don't know, whatever. It's very zen. I, yeah. I love. Well, thank you. I, I, that's what I'm trying for. Yeah, ten points because that's a big zen thing as well. Um, I listen to a podcast, uh, the Dana Gould Hour, which is funny because it's usually about two and a half hours long. Although somebody mentioned on Twitter earlier today. And the thing is, I tend to sort of save up Dana's shows because they're so incredibly long. I didn't realize that he's actually gone a little bit shorter. He's still about an hour now, but he's producing them more often. And so he's gone from a two and a half hour show that I had no problem listening to for two and a half hours because his guests were incredible and I love him uh, to something that's maybe a little bit more manageable and something that can come out you know, a bit more frequently. Um, Mac OS Ken is a daily news show, and I don't know why Mac OS Ken. Well, no, I do know why. It's because when Scott Shepard asked me to do a show for Inside Mac, he wanted a daily show, and and Apple News was easy in 2005. Not easy, but it was easy. It was much easier than it is today. Um, and then people liked the daily thing. They wanted to keep doing the daily thing, and then you know, plus coming from radio, I. I get the importance of this happens at this time every day. I understand why people like that. My favorite radio format is all of the CBS news, uh, television, uh, CBS news radio stations. Cause you know what happens anytime you're listening. Business happens at, well, used to be in San Francisco. I think business happened at 25 and 55. You knew exactly when everything happened. I like those short forms. You know what you're going to get, you know, when you're going to get it, you know about how long it's going to take, but that's just me, you know? Um, you don't need to do an hour on Apple News. You can do an hour on Apple News. Um, and Mac Voices has you know the right length for it. Um, uh, MacCast, Adam does about an hour to cover the Apple News, I think. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. It's as long as it needs to be. But to do it the way he does it, it takes that much time. Um, I think there's a place for the short form thing. But I don't think it's the way that it's going. I don't think any way is the way that it's going. There's, you know, there are people who have a certain vision for how they're going to do it. And then there are other people who are looking for that exact thing. And, you know, and then there are, you know, people in between. I know there are people who watch your shows, listen to Adam's show and listen to my show. I mean, it's, there's, there's, there, there are so many possibities. And for just about everything that you do, 
uh, there's you know potentially an audience. The question is, how do they find it? But that's a question that we've all wrestled with for over a decade now, and will continue to do. I feel certain. Yeah, and uh, well, your comments about Oprah Winfrey coming out with uh, with her old shows as a podcast, Johnny Carson's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. old shows becoming a podcast. I mean, you know, th there clearly is just when everybody thought radio was dying, you know, mm -hmm. it, podcasting has has created a renaissance of audio programming. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, and if if there's any any ever ever any better evidence than that. It's those two examples mm -hmm. um, because those, those shows should be, you know, way out of date, but they're finding an audience. Yeah. So Carson's Carson's a really weird one. Do you know me TV? Yeah. Yeah. I, have it here. I think it's me TV or maybe I think it was me TV. They were showing they They show reruns of Carson or they did a few years ago anyway. Um, and I found that really interesting. And then I found it really dated, but I would still watch it occasionally. And then um, the day, the thing that impressed me about this was they're, they're, they're actually programming it. I would assume they were just like, yeah, just, you know, here's, here's a year worth of Carson. And this is going to go on this night. This is going to go on this night. The day that Gary Shandling died, uh, I happened to be flipping channels that night. And me TV had um, Gary Shandling's first appearance on the tonight show. Now, it's possible that that was just a really weird coincidence. It's very possible. Doesn't seem likely, though. I mean, it, it, that was kind of an odd thing. And then to find out that they're doing it as a podcast, that's just, I assume that that is filled with ads of, hey, get the best of Carson on DVD, because that's what they do on MeTV. They're showing that kind of thing. But yeah, yeah, I was talking to, I was talking to, um, when I was talking to Tom a few weeks back on, uh, in a few minutes, I asked him, you know, sort of from the opposite side, not like, you know, Oprah or Johnny or things like that, but what is the place for a Tom Merritt, a Chuck Joyner, a Ken Ray, an Allison Sherrod, and a Shelley Brisbane? What is the place for those people in a time of wondery, right? In a time of Gimlet? And his response is anything that increases awareness of, of, of streaming media and podcasts is good. All it means is more audience. I mean, yes, there's still the question of how do they find you, but now there are more people who might be interested in what you're doing who are hip to the fact that this is a thing that's being done. So that's good too, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I think it is because just like Carson, the, the Carson reruns were finding an audience on MeTV. You know, I mean, that's very much a nostalgia channel, um, mm -hmm. but clearly there were people watching. And or otherwise, it wouldn't have lasted very long. Right. And, if, and if you read anything about Carson's organization, not, not just Carson himself, but his organization, I imagine that every, everything they do is pretty intentional. I don't think they are like some of the other uh, stuff that you see, say, on MeTV, that just sort of gets thrown out there and say, okay, you know, we can get this much to run this. Um, yeah. I, I, they probably are pretty intentional about what they were putting out and how they're going to put it out. I'll have to check out the podcast now because now you got me curious to see just see, how I they're just, structuring it. Honestly, I just saw it in iTunes. I haven't even had a chance to listen to it yet because I was looking for, I can't remember what I was looking for, but I was looking for something specifically and it was one of the things that sort of scrolled across the top. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And, you know, doing, uh, let's not go too far down this road, but just I'll say this, doing that as an audio thing, you could easily cut out some of the more timely stuff that is now outdated and just keep in some of the classic bits and even just the jokes. Yeah, and I guess. It would, it would, if you took, took the time, you could do it. So I would imagine. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff you could do there. Certainly. Yeah. Okay. We'll both have to listen to it and meet back. We'll meet back here yeah. in a month. That sounds just, good. Just talk that, about the Carson podcast. That sounds good. Yes. Let's do the Carson. We'll do the Carson re-listen Carson podcast podcast. Okay, I'm glad I got that recorded because I'd never get that title yeah. right again. Yeah, so probably not, not the best <laughs> idea, really. So should I, I, I don't want to ask you to reveal anything that you, you don't want to because you won't. Um, but uh, this is going to get, this is now rolling. It's out there. When mm -hmm. do you foresee the next project, um, seeing the light of day, or at least maybe hitting the test kitchen? Oh, I don't know. Like, I think I said earlier in this, in this uh, conversation, and it sort of surprised me. Um, month and a half, but I don't honestly know. I mean, it depends on you and I were talking before the show started about coronavirus. 
Uh, I would say it depends on how the world goes. And I don't mean to sound like, you know, I don't mean gloom or doom. It's just, it's, I don't want to put a time frame on anything in particular right this second, just because I'm doing so much other stuff. And wah, poor me. But talking about coronavirus every day really has kind of taken it out of me a little bit. Um, it makes it makes it sort of difficult to want to get together with strangers because the thing that I'm thinking about would actually be not my friends and I. It would be something hmm. a little bit different. And so I don't, I don't really have a good answer to your question, Chuck. I guess that's really what I'm saying. I mean, no, rel- relatively soon, I have an idea of what I want to do. I have um, a few people that I know I can get in touch with to start it and and pass that. I'm not trying to sound all mysterious. It's just well, it's, I'm gonna I'm gonna sound all mysterious. Well, well it's 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 a it's a recipe in progress. So, yes, you know that's exactly. And that's you know, like, and like I say, I want to make sure. Yes, I mean, it's not even in iTunes yet or on Apple Podcasts. It's been submitted, but you know, in a few minutes, isn't even there yet. So it's gonna it's it's. I feel like it's ready to go out now. It actually has to go out. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes and then, uh, and then check back with me. See, we're doing the Carson thing in a month. We're checking back on this in a year. Uh, so I'd say, you know, get, get in touch with me in a month and a half, two months. Okay. Sounds I'm good. planning out your show for you with me. <laughs> help hey. you help me help you or something. I've I've told you this before, and I don't want to make you uncomfortable, but I am an unabashed Ken Ray fan. So anything that you produce, I'm going to listen. You can count on me being there to listen to it because I want to hear it. Thank you. So, so you know, okay. folks, join me in 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 the Ken Ray fan club, and you know, check check out this new show. <laughs> How red am I? Okay, I, I can filter it out. I can. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Um, so let's see, Mac OS Ken, in a few minutes, mm-hmm. I don't want to forget though, um, the, the security show, the checklist, the checklist, yeah. uh, the checklist yeah. brought to you by secure Mac. Yeah. That's a weird thing. Talk about long tail. I pitched them on that show nine years before they got in touch with me. <laughs> True story. Sorry. I called them when I was still living in Oakland. Then said, you guys should do this. And seriously, it was nine years later that they sent me an email. And they're like, yeah, we've been thinking about that. (laughs) Really? Okay, great. So, yeah, that's almost, that's about two and a half years old now. Um, Comes out every Thursday. Uh, August Trometer and I um, take apart a few. It varies back and forth. What we do last week was all about Clearview AI. Generally speaking, there are three different topics that we do. I try to make it things that you can actually take action on. So like, you know, not like there's a new thing about a a class of Intel processor, apparently that people have been able to spy on for quite a while. You would think that would be the kind of thing we would do on the checklist. The only problem is there's not a lot you can do about it. And I am particularly interested in things that people can take action on, things that people can, you know, do to sort of protect themselves or, you know, recover from something if something bad has happened. Um, this week, as much as I don't want to, we're doing all coronavirus stuff, but what we're doing is actually the way that people are using coronavirus to, to prey on the unsuspecting, uh, with a side of here's how you clean your devices so that you don't, you know, end up picking up coronavirus on your phone and putting it in your face. Um, it's, and yet as, as, as awful as all that sounds, it's a lot of fun. So it's, I, I hope it's an amusing uh, it's an amusing look at all that stuff. I know that I have learned a ton doing that show over the past two and a half years. And that's, that ideally is my goal for that show. Um, it, not, not for me to learn a lot, but for, for people to learn a lot. Um, although if I do too, you know, then that's a bonus, I think. But um, yeah, every Thursday, uh, checklist, the checklist on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or whatever. Yeah, and and I have to tell you, it's it's a security. I've I've subscribed on and off to different security podcasts, and after a while, you just you burn out a little bit on them because of the of the uh, the deep geekery in them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just like the host just can't help but you know heading for the server and going going to the ones and zeros, and you know, you know that's not what the checklist is. The checklist is extremely approachable, and as you say, it's it gives me actionable information. And it's entertaining along the way. 
And so, you know, it's another home run as far as I'm concerned. You and well, August make a great pair. Thank you. To, to deliver that. I appreciate that. I mean, honestly, um, because I'm not that guy. I can't go to the servers or the zeros and the ones or all that. When I say I've learned a lot doing the show, I really have. But I mean, kind of like the same way I approach Mac OS Ken, I tend to approach Apple News from a, okay, there is a business slant, but from a consumer side, really. Um, and I'm the same way with the, with the technology stuff. I can say things back to you now about what you should do in certain situations, but that's only from having it drilled into my head for the past two and a half years. When I started the show, there's a ton of stuff that I wasn't doing when we started the show that is sort of like, it's part of my regular routine now. Um, occasionally I feel kind of bad that we're talking about some of the same stuff over and over again, like two factor authentication or, you know, um, uh, best practices for passwords, things like that. But those are the things that are going to keep us from failing. So I, so we do keep talking about it partly because we're going to have new people coming in and partly because all of that stuff is, is well worth reinforcing. Um, and as you say, if we can be entertaining as well, I mean, certainly that's, that's a, that's a, that's a hope. Yeah. Well, I can, I can recommend all those shows um, for all the reasons we've talked about. They're, they're just, they're a lot of fun. They, they have a place in my preferred podcasts each week. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I pretty much start my day with you, Ken. So, you know, on my way to work, I'm, I'm listening to you. So that's Thank not a bad you. thing. <laughs> not a bad thing. I appreciate it. So how, I, I know that you've mentioned a couple of times on the shows, I'm, I'm drawing now from your content, that um, social media is a bit of a challenge right now for you. Where's the best place or what's the best way for folks to get in touch with you and communicate with you if they want to ask questions or have comments on all this? Oh, um, info at macoscan.com is good. Um, and I, I do pay attention to Twitter when people say things to me specifically. So if you at macoscan, I'm macoscan on Twitter. If you add Mac OS Ken, that'll get my attention because I've got notifications set up to let me know that somebody has done that. I'm not off Twitter nearly as much as I want to be. I'm off it a lot more than I used to be, but it, it, it's, it's got to creep. It creeps back in. So that's honestly probably the best way to get in touch with me because I still get a lot of junk mail. But if you add me on Twitter, that's probably the best way to do it. Great. All right, so we have a whole schedule of your appearances on Mac Voices set up for up to the next year. So yeah. we'll be back frequently. But thanks so much for the time. This I always enjoy it. It's always fun. It's uh, I, it's always a pleasure uh, to 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 be asked, and I and I love being able to be here. And thank you very much, Chuck, for having me. We'll see you soon. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. I will make sure I have links to all of Ken's shows in the show notes so you can find them easily. And uh, and and no kidding, I, I really do listen. I really am a fan. I think if you listen, you will be too. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices, or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.